All righty, folks, we are going to talk with the best of the best. And what does that mean? A top 1% real estate agent in the country, not interstate, not inner city, 1% in the country, the one and only and amazing Beth Traverso. How are you doing, Beth? Hi, Michael. I'm doing great. It's always a highlight of my week to be here with you. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. The audience loves you. I know there's a question I get a lot. I'm going to guess you get it as well. And I have a sneaky suspicion our answers are going to be different, which is always mm. Here's yeah. the question. Should a real estate investor get their real estate license? What says yeah. Beth? So first of all, I want to give out a shout out to John Walters, one rental at a time listener who uh, emailed me this question. And you and I had chatted about maybe making a video about this. And so it just seemed really timely. So, um, so thank you, John. And so first of all, I want to say it, it depends. What is your best use of time is the first question for that. Because if you're doing really well, generating tons of income at your W-2 or flipping or whatever it is that you're excellent at, I don't think it's worth the time, money, and energy that will be required to get a real estate license. Getting a real estate license and being a great agent are not at all the same. It's extraordinarily, ridiculously simple to get your real estate license, which is why I've made a joke that, you know, if you wait long enough, everybody will get their real estate license. If you wait, you know, wait and, long and, enough, then, yeah. I know, but uh, there's a very, very high attrition rate where over a period of five years, I think it's, there's less than two in 10 remaining. Those are the ones that bother to renew their license. It doesn't mean they're selling houses even at that rate. So, right. and with transactions being down as far as they are, it's, it's, uh, it's brutal out there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So a lot of, a lot of even veteran agents are are struggling right now. So not to say you can't do it. If you're if it's the where you really want to be, if you want to make it a, a career or like a you know, at least 50% of your career where you've got your investing side and your listing side and selling side, you know, your real estate agent side, then there could be a case made for it. Um one of the things I really love about it, so I've always done both in tandem. I've started real estate investing kind of around the same time that I got my license. So for me, it's always been hand in hand. And I never had to try to be an investor without being an agent. It would be challenging for me if I had my MLS access taken away and I had to rely on others for that. That would be a challenge for me. I've never had to deal with that. So yeah. there, there, there could be some potential. There are some benefits to it, that being one of them, the access to it. You do potentially save money on your commissions, of course, which is the big motivator for a lot of people. Yep. But just know that if you're an inexperienced agent that doesn't know your way around how the game is played, you can easily be taken advantage of and not even know it or just trampled over and not even know it and lose more than you think you're gaining. Plus, there's a lot of expenses that go along with having a license as well. It's not inexpensive yeah. for all the fees and uh, there of which there are many. So yeah, couldn't agree but that's a, just some preliminary thoughts for me. What do you think? So I like how you broke it down. Let's, because I do think you're right. There's two categories, which I didn't even know when I asked the question, but you're right again. Like if you're a full-time employee and you're going to be working for the next decade and you're going to, I'll say it this way. Don't bother getting your real estate license. Your focus should be, how can I get become the best employee yeah make more money, do that, change jobs, skill up, right? Your your focus should be on that. And oh, by the way, keeping sp expenses low, stacking cash, all of that. Mm -hmm. So if you're an employee and your time frame in the job, in the seat is five to 10 years, don't bother. It's just, it's a distraction, frankly, in my opinion. Now let's let's assume you're like me. You get to that moment where you're financially free. And I talk about this in my book, One Rental at a Time. I retire without a plan. And one of the first things that seem obvious to me is go get your real estate license. Why? Because I buy and sell a lot of properties. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like you said, might as well go get that commission for me. It can help me with down payments if I'm the buyer. It gives me a little extra on the sell your seller side. And you're right. Getting your license is relatively easy. I, I paid a couple hundred bucks for some online thing that I listened to over the course of, I don't know, six weeks. Yeah. I took a test. Honestly, I had no idea if I would pass. It's simply pass fail. And I passed the first time, Yeah. which frankly probably shouldn't have happened because I didn't study that hard. 
really did not study that hard. Yeah. And uh, I got my license. Then I had to hang my shingle. Great news is I know a lot of people in Fresno. So I hung my shingle with a broker I know. And um, then I realized there's nothing about being a real estate agent that I liked. The paperwork, freaking hate paperwork. I hate paperwork. Yeah. So what did I do? I yeah. found one of the agents I worked with and said, hey, you know what? Let's split my commission on anything yeah. I buy or sell. And you do all the paperwork and I'll just do what I like to do. They, of course, said yes. They really don't have a choice because it's my business. Uh, but I offshot that. And then I realized after that that I frankly didn't like telling everybody I was a licensed agent. Because one of the things that you don't know as an investor is once you're a licensed agent, the level of disclosures yeah. that you have to do go way up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but well, I know you, but I don't know about you, yeah. the audience listening. Yeah. I like to be creative. And I don't like to have this license behind me, which immediately brings me up the food chain and the liability kind of comes to me first. Mm -hmm. And when in doubt, I'm wrong, they're right. I'm like, F this. I don't want any of this nonsense. I would rather, rather be assumed because when you're a licensed agent, you're assumed to be an expert. And when you don't have it, you're assumed to be a moron. I would much rather people think I'm a moron when I'm actually a wolf. And right. Uh, yeah, there's there's just nothing about being a licensed agent that excites me, in my opinion. Yeah, the actual job is a lot different than a lot of people think it is. Way different. You know, um, it's nothing like what you see on TV. It's not about looking at pretty houses and spending five minutes writing a contract and taking the big checks to the bank. It's not that easy. Otherwise, there wouldn't be that many people failing out of the business. Right. Uh it is a business. You have to build it as if you're with the same intensity and time and concentration and hard sure. work as if you're building a business, a challenging business from scratch. So you have to have the time and money to invest into that. And you're right. You you are held to a higher standard, at least in Washington, you're held to the same standard as an attorney for the purposes of filling out these legal contracts. And that's a high threshold. That's a, that's so, a pretty high bar that I want no part of. It is. <laughs> yeah. And there, we just had a massive licensing law change in Washington where even people like me have been doing this for decades. We have to, you know, you have to constantly be polishing your sharpening your tools. So, yeah. And, so, yeah. yeah. So what do you, so what do you think? So we, I think we come to an agreement on the employee part. What do you think though? So you're done, you're financially free. Um, or, or, you know what, let's change it up. Cause I think those two kind of make sense to me. Let's assume, uh, let's assume you're an employee who gets laid off mm -hmm. and you have a, you know, you, you have this burning desire about real estate. Should you get your license if you're laid off or should you just focus on getting a job in the industry you just left? Let's talk about that person. Cause I've, I've actually never had this discussion. What do you think? Yeah. So, you know, for me, I've never worked in that corporate world, so you can give insight into that. But, um, but there, if you like the predictability of that pay and the, uh, it's easier to get jobs that, you know, to, to be an employee than to be a, a business owner, entrepreneur, which real estate agents really are. Um, but I can say that if you are, if you have enough financial runway that you're able to really make a go of it, you get laid off. That could sometimes be the catalyst for a big change. And yeah. I've seen people, I know lots of people, the majority of people in real estate come from some other career. They were in right. another field, something happened in their lives where they decided it was time to make a change or they needed to make a change and they jumped in and made a go of it. So, and a lot of them have yeah. been very successful especially those who maybe were, uh, you know, have a sales background or a business background. Those are the ones that tend to do the best. The ones that are just dabbling as a hobby just never seem to do very well. And that's yeah. a large percentage of, of real estate agents out there. But the good news is if you're willing to dive in and get the mentorship and the uh, skills and training that you need, um, then you can make a career of it. And that could be a good, a good chance, a good opportunity for you to for someone to start fresh as a, as a real estate agent in that career change. Yeah. Um, I would say you should have a six month, at least uh, runway. I don't think I got my first commission check for six months. And yeah, even I, after I that, it was kind of spotty. It was not very good. I kind of had some side hustles and stuff for a while before I. I love you brought that up. I mean, if, if you're going to get laid off and you're in tech and you get a severance package, I think you're absolutely right. You need to know. 
that you have. And let's be clear. If you haven't started taking, I think the fastest you can get through the course is like six weeks, right? So it's yeah, a six I think week, it's 60 eight, hours or they might've bumped it up to 90 hours. And it's yeah. still ridiculously low, yeah. but yeah, but it's going to take you time. It's, it's, it's it will not, take some time and it's kind of dry. It's all the stuff that you'll never have to know again, your entire career. It's nothing that has to do with actual selling yeah. of homes. <laughs> it's yeah. the, I mean, it's important things to know, I suppose, you know, you learn things about, you know, yeah. some vocabulary the, the legal system and you know, how, uh, you know, how many square feet an acre and, you know, how meets and bounds and townships and things like that, right. you know, you learn those things. And I've probably taken those different courses three different times over my career for different purposes, you know, and it's just, you yeah. know, it's a bit of a slog unless you're really into that kind of thing. But the, and you'll never hear about that again once you get your license. Yeah. So you're really going to the learning really starts after you get your yeah. license. So you need to start working into that, too. And one a real quick, I'll just answer a question that John, a follow up question that John Walters mm -hmm. had was, um that where should he start? And so I would say, find, join a team. Yep, you got to get, you got to get experience. And if you don't have deals that you're helping people with, you won't get the experience. And so you need to be, um, I would think on a team, maybe find a partner, uh, work under a mentor, join a, a brokerage. Um, you know, there are many good ones. I'm hanging my license with Keller Williams. I'm affiliated with them. And so they're, they have really great training and support yeah. and they're very yeah. much good about building businesses. So I, I would, can recommend them. Yep. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you, the learning is, is a, it's a never ending process, but it's a very steep learning curve in the beginning because there's a lot that can go wrong potentially. And you need the oversight in the beginning. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. So folks, at the end of the day, what I would tell you, if you are do get laid off, if you do have that six month run rate, nine month run rate, and you're willing to work, you're willing to be an entrepreneur, this is a business, not a hobby. It could be a great, you know, sometimes, you know, seasons end and, and the, you know, another door opens. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you, if you're hungry for cash to pay bills, mm -hmm. you're, you're six months out easy from yeah. a paycheck and maybe even more like nine months. Mm -hmm. Beth, you're amazing. If somebody wanted to get a referral or ask other questions, how do they find you? Yeah, people can reach out to me. The easiest way is through my website, bethtraversogroup.com. Thank you so much.